<laughs> that intro is so shit. Yes, yes, people, welcome back to another stream. Manchester City have got five hundred million pounds to spend each and every transfer window, thanks to the proposed changes in financial fair play regulations. Now, if these changes go through, which it pretty much is, they're gonna make they're basically gonna match UEFA's um change uh, changes to FFP. It's not gonna be done. Um, how it currently is done, it's going to be done on basically you can spend a turn, you can, you can uh, spend a percentage of your turnover at Manchester City because we've got all the sponsors in the world. <laughs> all the opposition fans can chat to us about how they're not all real, but they're real, they're real. So we apparently, I'm going to get all the sources up on this as well, it's pretty interesting, financial expert has been speaking. City, they reckon, could spend up, up to around £500 million a season. Now, whether or not that actually happens, I mean, let's be honest, it's not going to happen, right? That's not going to happen. But the facts are, these changes to financial fair play and, and, and profit and sustainability rules are, are likely to make Manchester City, you know, in compliance. And we've spoken about this before, and, and, and opposition fans don't really want to hear this, but it's true. Right now, financial fair play-wise, City are chilling. You know what I mean? City are, City are doing all right on the financial fair play. Because once you're in, as we all know, once you're in, you're in. You know what I mean? Very rarely, if you've got the big revenues, you, 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 you very rarely you're going to be impacted by that situation. So because City have now got the revenues, and again, I don't really care about this debate about whether the sponsorships are real. That's not for me as a football fan to work out. If opposition fans and Gary Neville wants to sit there and tell me that they're not real, no problem, man. don't give a shit. You know what I mean? If they're not real, go and report them to the police for fraud. Yeah, because that's effectively what you're saying and let them deal with it. At the end of the day, the sponsorship money is there. Um, and and it means that we are protected as a football club right now in, in this financial fair play situation. Now, you know my thoughts on this. I, I think the whole financial fair play is a, a, a load of nonsense, and I don't even think it should exist, but it does exist, and so you're going to be protected by this. Let me pull up some of these um, some of these, these this information where it's come from. So Kieran Maguire, now I don't know if you guys know Kieran Maguire, um, but Kieran Maguire is a pretty, pretty well respected. Um, journalist, when it comes to sort of the financial financial um, conversations, FFP accounts, all that kind of stuff, yeah. So it is someone to listen to. I'm not saying you have to like believe everything that he says, and obviously, 500 million seems a lot. But this is what he's had to say. This is he's done a he's done a sort of piece. He said Manchester City will be allowed. This is by the way, this on Football Insider. Man City will be allowed to spend around 500 million quid every year under new financial rules if voted in by Premier League clubs. Um, City can consistently spend big in the transfer market if their Abu Dhabi owners are not worried about making a profit. Um, and again, are they making? Are they? Are they uh, Shape Man saw asked about that. You know, what I mean, I would probably say not really. He doesn't. He doesn't strike me as the type of person, and our owners don't really strike me as the type of people that want to take dividends from the football club. But hey, maybe they do. Maybe they do. Um, the new regulations will cap spending on transfer fees, wages and agents to a percentage of that overall revenue. And you see the, see the sentence here, guys. This is what the Premier League are doing. So at the moment, you've kind of got two different systems going on because UEFA changed. UEFA changed and we're all like chill with the UEFA's, um, UEFA's new profit and sustainability where you can spend a percentage of your, of, of your revenue. Whereas now the Premier League and I'm moving towards that. So, I mean, first of all, we've got to have a bit of a conversation about why all these different rules, guys. Listen, I know you've got the Premier League, you've got the Bundesliga, and obviously the Premier League and Bundesliga can have different financial rules. You've obviously got the UEFA as well, who can have their own rules. It seems like a little bit of a juggling act, yeah, to meet all the financial rules in place. I feel, personally, that if you are going to have rules in place, which are still, I'm not really for... You should probably have one set of rules so you're not you're not messing around. Um, he goes on to say City broke the Premier League record um, in 2023 with a total revenue of £713 million. Kieran Maguire then explained that City can spend, five, obviously theoretically, City could spend £500 million each season and still comply with both UEFA and Premier League financial regulations if they uh, meet their current revenue uh, target and it says here City are going to be delighted with the Premier League have adopted the squad control cap that's similar to the one exists within UEFA. Uh, we can assume it's going to be 70% cap for the clubs that qualify for European competition. 
And uh, something that's important to know, I I'm pretty sure you all probably knew this anyway, but that would allow City to spend £500 million a year in respect of wages, agents, fees, uh, and then net transfer costs. So it's not like you can just spend 500 million quid every single season on 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 transfers. That that's not going to be that's not going to be possible. But the whole thing in, in combination, 500 million quid is is a lot of money. Obviously, as we all know. So to be able to spend that every year, and and I would also say you'd expect that to rise. You'd expect that to rise because. Football's a growing business. It's a growing sport year on year. Everyone sees the numbers every year. Oh, the Premier League attracted more and more views this year than it ever has before. Constantly setting uh, TV viewing figures uh, in the States uh, uh, and worldwide. You know, these TV deals that, that keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I watched something on YouTube today, yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen it on T4 IRL. Good YouTube channel. Sold it to Athletic, but... Fair news, they made the bag. Um, they done a they done a video on Apple. You know, Apple we made the iPhone. Yeah, there they've obviously bought the rights to the MLS. I'm sure, a lot of the uh, American viewers will probably know that that they bought the rights to the MLS, and basically they reckon that Apple in the next years are going to work their way into Europe and eventually the Premier League. And when that happens, bloody hell, that's going to be even more crazy because they've got cash to burn, mate. So football's only getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The the money involved is only getting more and more and more. You know, ticket prices are only going one way. They're not going down, lads. They're only going one way, and that's upwards. Merchandise, T-shirts, everything is getting more and more money. And ultimately, that does filter down to the clubs. And that means the more money you're getting, the more money you can spend because it's a percentage of your revenue. So if you're saying already, Kieran Maguire's suggesting already that City can spend 500 million quid on, on wages, agents, um, fees, and, 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 and net transfer costs, that's... That's at a base now. That's at a base now. Imagine in five years' time. Imagine in 10 years' time when City might be doing a billion quid in revenue. Who knows? And by the way, United will be the same. You know what I mean? Chelsea. Well, I say Chelsea. You don't really know what's going on with Chelsea. Um, Liverpool can be similar. Obviously, they're all big clubs. Arsenal as well. Real Madrid. They're all probably going to be the same. But it goes back to what I said at the start of the stream. City are now in a position... Where, where we've got the revenue and we're able to spend. I don't think, other than the 115 charges, which we've got to address and will be dealt with, once they're dealt with, providing that we're successful in defending the, the allegations, I think City are away then. I think they're away and, and I don't think there's, there's any stopping us, to be honest with you. Of course, if the 115 charges smash us down for whatever reason, then we could be slightly muddied. But um, yeah, it's looking good, man. 500 million quid budget. Per season, to spend on wages, agents and fees, it's good news. And, and the profit and sustainability rules are changing. Uh, by all accounts, City are very happy with this because it suits us better than the, the old one does. And you know what I say, yeah? You know when Pep Guardiola came out last year and said, there are no friends or enemies, there are just interests. We also have our own self-interest. Don't get it twisted, yeah? City will want to, to, to change the rules because they want, they want the rules to benefit them. Just like Manchester United, Arsenal, Liverpool... 10 years ago, changed the rules because they wanted to benefit them. It's it's all just a game of interest and keeping yourself at the top. And I don't really blame that. This is what I say. Like, yes, the whole FFP thing when it was introduced was was effectively a, a, a mechanism to keep the top to, top clubs at the top. It 100% is. And I, I, I can't, can't believe that people actually deny that. But am I, am, I, do, I, am I confused as to why they did it? Do I... Do I, am I angry to them for doing it? Well, maybe slightly angry, but I completely understand why they did it. Why wouldn't you? If you owned a football club that was getting all these revenues from the Champions League year on year, of course you want to try and protect it. And now City are there. City can, can at the table. City have power, just like Arsenal, Liverpool, United, and they can try and push it in, in the direction that they want. And now it's, it's looking decent. So like I say, we've got to deal with the 115. We'll deal with that later on in the year. But if we get through that and we defend ourselves successfully, we don't get anything major like being kicked out of the division, um, then I think I think we'll be away. I, I really, really do. So, guys, keep your comments coming in um, on on this uh, on this news about about five hundred million pound a year. Um, let me know what you guys have to say about that. Make sure you smash a like on it as well. Listen, there is some transfer news that I want to go through here, guys. Some some interesting transfer news as well, including a goalkeeper. That, um, that I've not heard of. Let me let me bring this up. Let me bring this up, guys. 
Manchester City identify potential Stefan Ortega replacement amid um, uh, European and Middle Eastern transfer interests. There we go. Uh, Etihad Stadium bosses have reportedly identified potential replacement. The German goalkeeper has been a huge success. Yep, we know that. Um, where is he? Come on. Where's the actual report on it? <clears throat> What does he not actually say who it is? I'm sure I said it before. Uh, there we go. Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't. I, I knew it was there. Uh, right, Graham Bailey, who reports that AS Roma goalkeeper Mil Sivla has emerged as an option for City should they need to replace Stefan Ortega. Well, to be honest with you, we know we're going to have to replace Stefan Ortega. There is no way that Stefan Ortega is staying at City next season. He's far too good to be a number two. Far too good. We're going to get a decent price. I'm looking for at least £25, £30 million pound as an absolute minimum for Stefan Ortega because I think he could be playing first team, first team football for... A lot of Premier League clubs, to be honest with you. That's good, obviously, for the profit because we signed him for nothing. And uh, this this Sivla is is someone that we're that we're that we're interested in. I can't say I've seen too much about him, but yeah, I just thought I'd bring it to your attention. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna come on to the Tommy tweet in a second as well because that's that's kind of mad. Right, let's go through this because there's quite a bit of city news on this one, guys. Pep Guardiola is obsessed, obsessed, guys. Yeah. With Newcastle midfielder Bruno Guimaraes. But Manchester City would have to pay the £100 million release clause um, to sign the Brazilian international. In fact, that's your role. So it's 85 million quid release clause, um, according to that, for Bruno. Um, it also says West Ham expect Manchester City to move. Uh, for Brazil midfielder Lucas Paqueta. Listen, we've had a, we've had chats about we've had chats about Bruno bare times, and to be honest with you guys, I just ain't feeling it, man. I just I'm just ain't I just ain't feeling it, man. I don't know. There's something about there's something about it that just doesn't it just doesn't move me, man. I, and I don't I don't know. Now I know some people will be like LB. He's got Prem experience. He's got international experience. He's got Champions League experience. Eighty five million. It's a good price, LB. But I look at it, you know, and I'm just like, do you know when you're just not sold on a deal? The one thing that I would say yeah, with Bruno is I wasn't fully sold on Paqueta when we was linked with him last year. And after a month or two, I was like, I really want this guy. And now I'm absolutely desperate for Lucas Paqueta. So your opinion can change. I am someone that is known to change their opinion. Sometimes people call me a flip-flop, but it's because I'm changing my mind. You know what I mean? I'm not someone who just has an agenda and will never change my mind. I will change my opinion if 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 I see something that, that makes me change my opinion. I'm not afraid to change my opinion. At the moment, with Bruno, I'm just... I can't put my finger on it, yeah, as to what, what it is that I just don't really like. I just, yeah, just not for me. Lucas Paqueta, on the other hand, yeah, we need this guy. Oh, my days. Like, oh, I don't think I've done a... I don't think I've ever done... A 180 on a player as much as I've done on, on Lucas Paqueta ever in my life. Because when we was first linked to him, yeah, people who used to watch the streams over a year ago, yeah, you will know that I wasn't a massive fan of Lucas Paqueta at the time. Now, I have accepted that part of that reason might just be due to the fact that we was being sold a dream on Jude Bellingham and then on Declan Rice and when you go from Jude Bellingham and Declan Rice to Lucas Paqueta, there is an initial... You know what I mean? There's initial, there's initial down period. But when you get over that period and you realise, hang on a minute, Lucas Paquette is a baller. What am I being sad for? What am I being down for and depressed? Then you realise, oh, damn, this is actually a play that we should go for. Then you start watching West Ham and you start watching Lucas Paquette absolutely cook. You're watching for Brazil and you're like, oh, Lord, this guy's a player and he would fit into Manchester City system at ease, yeah, and he's got that little bit of samba about him that this team, I reckon, could do with a little bit of samba. It's a perfect deal. Now, is it going to cost a lot of money? Eighty-five million pound is the rumored fee. Of course, it's a lot of money, but this is this is the price you got to pay. There's no point in spending twenty minutes speaking about the fact that you've got a five hundred million pound budget to spend every season. If you're going to start moaning about playing the play, if you pay the money, I don't pay the money. Simple as, yeah, simple as. So for me. Lucas Paqueta is, as soon as these gambling charges are done, yeah, 
I want City to deposit the £85 million check into the bank account of West Ham United instantly, mate. I don't even want to let them know. Just, just send the money, wire transfer, boom, £85 million in the bank, and then ring up West Ham and say, by the way, we've activated the release clause. The money's in your account. Spend it wisely. Lucas Paqueta's coming here in the summer because he's absolutely phenomenal. He is absolutely phenomenal. And by the way, fair play to West Ham for picking him up when he was at when he was at Leon because obviously he was doing well at Leon, but for some reason, like a Champions League club didn't want to really take the risk on him. And, and West Ham did, and it's paid out massively because I think they bought him for like 35, 40 million, something like that. So they they're gonna more than double their money. He obviously helped them win the conference league as well. So it's been a massive successful purchase for them. And um, I just feel that like it's a deal that we just 100 percent need to go in for. As soon as those gambling charges are done. Which are weird, by the way, because do you remember that stream we done like two weeks ago? That Brazilian director uh, of football in, in Brazil was saying, who works for Brazil, FA, and he was like, yeah, 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 the player's not under any sort of investigation or whatever. So everyone in this country was like, oh, yeah, it's been cleared. Oh, it's going to be cleared. He's leaked it. He's leaked it. And then the FA basically went to a newspaper and said, nah, he's still under investigation. So I'm not, I don't know what's going on there with the investigation. I almost feel like no one really knows what's happening there. One minute we're being told by the Brazilians that it's all chilling. The guy's not under investigation. Maybe they've finished their investigation. I don't know. And then they've not found anything. But the FA are just being slow. Uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on there. But it's a bit weird. It is a bit weird. We'll have to see what happens with it. I think you'll get not guilty, yeah. Just like I think City will get not guilty. <laughs> Maybe I'm delusional. <laughs> I'm just It just clicked in my head. Hang on a minute. You want Paqueta. He's under charge. You think he's going to get not guilty. You support City. We're under charge. You think he's going to get not guilty. Maybe I'm just being a little bit delusional. But I hope he does get not guilty because, obviously, you don't want to see any player get banned. It was like Tonali at Newcastle. You don't want to see any player, and, and Tony. You don't want to see any player get banned. Um, obviously, if they've committed the crime, then they've got to be banned, in it? But hopefully, he's not. And if he's not, then we should 100% strike. We should 100% strike for him. He's a, he's a, he really is a top, top player. And I, I feel like he could come into our team and he could fit in relatively easy as well. So, yeah, for me, Lucas Paqueta, if available, let's get it done. Uh, another interesting development today that hasn't been linked with Manchester City, but Fabrizio Romano, guys, has been speaking today about Alfonso Davies. I don't know how many of you guys have seen. Look at him. He looks so happy, man. I don't know how many of you guys have seen this news from Fabrizio Romano. Alfonso Davis will not sign yeah, a new deal at Bayern Munich right now. Real Madrid are aware of the situation. Decision will be made in the next weeks, but it's a tense situation. If no extension is agreed, Davis will leave this summer. Real Madrid prepared to open talks with Bayern Munich um, with opening bid. Now, we know that Real Madrid have been heavily linked with Alfonso Davies. Um, that's something that everyone is aware of. However, our football club, Manchester City, um, has not signed a left back, a first team left back since Benjamin Mendy um, in 2016, 2017. Uh, and he played, what, like 50 games? We've not seen a proper left back at our football club yet. Really, since Gail Cliche. Gail Cliche, man. It's 2024, Tiki. Yeah, it's time to sign a left back, mate. Now, I know you tried. I know you tried. I'll give you credit for trying on Mark Kukurea. Yeah, I'll give you credit. Didn't quite work out. I'm not sure looking back whether I would have wanted us to sign him anyway, because he's not really done. He's not really pulled up trees, has he, at Chelsea? I know he's getting a bit better now, but it is what it is. Sergio Gomez was. Uh, Obviously, a bit of a risk that didn't really come off. Alfonso Davies, guys, is there. Now, he's got a contract until next season. He's got one year left on his deal. The question is, should Manchester City be competing with Real Madrid for the signature of Alfonso Davies? Now, <laughs> I'm sorry. The answer for me is quite clear. It's yes. Yes, we absolutely should. Here's the thing, right? I feel like whenever I do streams or videos on players that are good players, I feel like a lot of fans, they just throw in the towel. They just throw in the towel. Oh, we've got no chance of signing this player. Oh, we've got no chance of signing this player. Well, hang on a minute. Where was this energy when we was going head-to-head -head with Real Madrid to sign 
Erling Haaland and we got Erling Haaland. Where was the energy then? I feel like because Jude Bellingham, we took a little bit of a, a knock on Jude Bellingham. He, he rejected us, went to Real Madrid. Everyone's all of a sudden just like, nah, you ain't got no chance. He's going there, he's going there. Like, lads, you have to try. This is the thing, you have to try. You can't just be knocked back on Jude Bellingham and then all of a sudden just be like, well, if anyone else is linked with a player, then we're not getting involved. You have to try. These are the best players, man. These are the best players. And left-back wise, yeah, that Theo Hernandez, no one's no one's signing him, man. He's staying there. You know what I mean? Alfonso Davies, he's only 23 years old. He's got so much experience, guys. I mean, look at this. Yeah, if I bring this up on screen, actually, look at this experience. Yeah. I ain't got diabetes, man. I don't know why. I don't know why those ads come up, to be honest. Uh, right, look at this, guys. Yeah, 184 appearances for Bayern Munich. 184 appearances for Bayern Munich. 45 games for Canada. Yeah. He's played 127 games in the Bundesliga. 37 games in the Champions League. This guy is mad experienced for his age. And he's got a year left on his contract. Now, yes, it's going to be a lot of money. Yes, you're going to have to go to head to head with Real Madrid. But I think we should at least try. I think we should at least try. And if they, if, you know, listen. Guys, there's no shame in getting getting rejected by a player for Real Madrid. Yeah? In my opinion. There's no shame there. There's literally no shame. Like, Real Madrid are the giants. They're the biggest club in the world. Yeah, they've won many, many, many Champions League. It is going to be difficult. They're in Spain. You know what I mean? Brilliant, hot country. A lot of players would rather play in the hot weather. But you've got to try, man. You've got to try. If you don't try... Then you, what's the point? You got to try and get them. You got to try and put a proposal in front of them to try and get them in. And Alfonso Davis, by the way, yeah, for all for all the negative Noreens in the chat, he actually said in an interview he'd rather play in the Premier League than, than La Liga. He was asked, he said, "What would you rather play in the Premier League or La Liga?" He said, "The Premier League." Now he did say Chelsea. <laughs> he did say Chelsea. Yeah, but he said the Premier League. So put put the offer in front of him, mate. Who was the last Canadian to play for Manchester City, chat? There's a little trivia. All Canadian Man City players. Who was the last Canadian Manchester City player? <clears throat> yeah, I got one here. Oh, wait. Did he play for City? He did play for City. Did anyone know? Anyone know? There was a guy called Terry Dunfield who played one match for Manchester City. One match for Manchester City in 2001. He played, funny enough, he played against Chelsea. He played 58 minutes against Chelsea in 2001 in the Premier League. At home, we lost 2-1. So we have had Canadian players in the past. Yeah, maybe we could get Terry Dunfield on the phone. Sort us out. Steve Howie scored in that game. Hasselbank and Dennis Wise scored for uh, the Chelsea. Maybe get him on the phone. Terry Dunfield. Little Canadian magical. Owen Hargreaves. Yeah, but o Owen Hargreaves was also kind of English, isn't it? So, I, I was going to say Owen Hargreaves, but he's also kind of in English. I think he was born. Was he born in? Yeah, he was born in Canada, but he also plays for England. He also played for Wales under 19. That's weird. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, listen. Yeah, I think you've got to try, man. You've got to try and go and get Alfonso Davis. I don't... Listen, I, it, it looks very much likely. Here's a question for you, though. Yeah. <laughs> and some people might not want to do this. Would you go in for Furland Mendy? Or nah? Because obviously, Furland Mendy, yeah, is going to be available... Um, if if Real Madrid get Alfonso Davies. Now, he's only 28 years old. He'll be 29 in the summer. I think he's decent, me. I'm not saying like he's, a, he's, he's, he's mega, but like he's a decent, decent player. Like, I, I really do. What's his transfer market estimated value? 20 million euros. He's only got a contract until next season as well. A lot of people saying, nah. Bears, what's his experience level? Let's have a look at his experience. So he's played 161 times for Real Madrid, nine times for France, 
79 times for Lyon. So he's played quite a lot of football. Won quite a lot. His injury record sucks. Uh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. But it's very recent. It's very recent. Yeah, actually, that's not actually that great, to be honest with you. Wow, 2022 was a bad year. Yeah, yeah, it's not ideal. It's, it's not ideal. It's not It's not the worst I've ever seen. I ignore it. Yeah, I ignore it. Oh, yeah, Miguel, man. Bloody hell, sold out my boy, Miguel. Yeah, you've got Miguel as a potential option at uh, Girona. But I don't know what's going on with him because Real Madrid, apparently, they put like a, not like a statement, but they obviously fed the news, fed the press. About two months ago, Real Madrid, all the news came out, Real Madrid were not going to go back in for Miguel, uh, Miguel Gutierrez at Girona. Now, for those that don't know, Girona signed Miguel from Real Madrid, but Real Madrid have a sell-on clause and a buyback clause. I think the buyback's around 25 million quid. Maybe let, correct me if I'm wrong there in the chat, yeah. But here's the thing. 25 million quid. They said they were not going to activate that buyback. However, in the last couple of weeks, some rumours have been coming out that actually Real Madrid are considering the buyback option of Miguel Gutierrez. But that means they're going to have Mendy, Miguel and Alfonso Davis if they sign Alfonso. They're going to have three left-backs, Bray. They're going to have three left-backs. Now, that seems a little bit OTT to me to have three left-backs. Yeah. Hello. We ain't got one. Can we take one? I'll quite put my hand up front of the queue. Yeah, I would like a left-back, please. And you've got three. So I don't know what's fully going on there. I would. I think Miguel Gutierrez looks like a top player. Um, I think you could get him at a decent price because obviously he's owned by Girona, so I'm sure there's some some stuff that you could do there. Um, other than that, Ike Nori at Wolves, good player, good player. Um, I like I like Ike Nori. I think Ike Nori could be uh, could be a serious option. I'd be surprised, yeah, if no if no Champions League or at least Europa League team goes in for Ike Nori because he is he is a top player. He is a top player. Livramento, nah, I wouldn't go for Livramento. And to be honest with you, I don't think they'd sell. They only just got him. I don't think they. I don't think they. I don't think they get him, man. So yeah, I mean, but my option personally would be Miguel Gutierrez. But I would try and go and get Alfonso Davies. I think you've got to try and get him. I think you've got to try and get him. If not, go for Miguel Gutierrez, who I think looks like a top player. Anthony Robertson. You know what, Gab? Yeah. A lot of people say Anthony Robinson, Anthony Robinson. I'm just not sold on him, man. I, I I think he's a good player. I think he's a good player. I just don't think he's Champions League level. Is my just my genuine opinion. Just my opinion would be would be that. B says uh, Davies, Theo Hernandez, Miguel. This is the thing. You know with the, Theo Hernandez, right? Do you ever do you never just think to yourself, well, hang on a minute. How come no one signed him? He's been available, you know what I mean, now for a long time, yeah? How long has he been there for? He's been there since 2019. Hernandez, if he was that good, surely a Real Madrid, a Bayern Munich, a PSG, a Liverpool, a City, an Arsenal, a United, surely one of these teams would have gone and got him. Why is he still at AC Milan? That's my only concern with the Hernandez. But, you know, he's a decent player, to be fair. I'm not saying he's shit. I'm just saying, like, sometimes I'm like, mm, well, how come no one signed him, man? All these scouts who are watching him and that. Why why has no one signed him? Uh, United getting Kimmich. It looks like, you know what? I've seen this before, man. Where, where did I see this? Where did I see it? City have signed some 15-year-old. Where did I see this? Was it was it Fabrizio? Yeah, I, I did see this earlier on, but... um. I kind of just ignored it, to be honest with you, because I didn't, I didn't think it was real. But didn't he come out? I'm sure he come out, like, two weeks ago and said, oh, nah, it's, it's not happening, mate. He don't want to go there. So, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what's going on with that one. I feel like, where's our links, man? Other than Lucas Paqueta, we are not being linked with anyone. We're not being linked with anyone. Bro, talk about our injuries. Bro, there's, there's, there's nothing to, there's literally nothing. Mike, brother. Right. I'm not sure you, how you know, like how how streams, how conversations work, right? You know if you you know if you pick up a newspaper, bro. I'm gonna say, sorry, chat. 470 people in there. In it, I've just got to give Mike a little explanation. You know you pick up a newspaper, yeah, and the front of the newspaper says "crash in London," 
big crash, yeah, as a headline, right? The whole newspaper isn't just about the crash. You might get a page or two pages about the crash, Mike, yeah? After that, there's other shit in the newspaper. Similarly to this stream, for the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, yeah, I spoke about FFP. After that, just like the newspaper, I then changed and started talking about some other stuff, transfers. That's how it works, bro. You don't just speak about the same thing for the whole stream, Mike. Fucking hell. Jesus Christ, what's wrong with people? I swear people need to go out and touch some grass, man. I, I really do. Bro just wants me to speak about Man City's budget for 500 million for what? An hour? Honestly, it's unbelievable. <laughs> But, um, yeah, no, the injury situations are madness, to be honest with you. The injury situations are madness. Um, I ain't seen too much going on, any 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 breaking news since yesterday. At the moment, we're just waiting information. We are literally just awaiting information on every single player. We don't, we don't know what's happening. We'll have to wait and see. You know, I think, I think Akanji, Akanji, I think, will be... I think Akanji, if Akanji's like 50-50, I think we'll risk him. I don't think we'll risk Walker because we've got Vinicius Jr. coming up. So I, I feel like Walker, he, he ain't going to be risked. Um, John Stones, I don't think will be risked because what's the point? He'll just get injured as well. Um, but I think Akanji is one. Because Akanji's apparently was a knock. It wasn't a muscle injury, man. It wasn't a muscle injury. So apparently... If it's just a knock, you might be able to, to 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 throw him in there. But if you remember the game, who did we play in the cup? Who did we play in the cup where a Kanji got injured and that was a knock and actually was out for a, a, a long a, a more a longer time. So yeah, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure what's going on there. But I think a Kanji could potentially be a risk. Walker won't be a risk if he's if he's not available. And uh, and and nor will John Stones. Nor will John Stones. Uh, Andrew says, question, I have sore arms from weights training. Can I do more today or rest? <clears throat> yeah, just don't train arms, bro. Train back. Oh, back uses a lot of arms, to be fair. Che I don't know, try legs. Try legs, bro. Get, get to the gym and do your legs. Or do some cardio or something, bro. Mohammed says, I've been seeing a bit too much disrespect on us from Mohammed. Um, and LB says this international break has bent us over, bro. Oh, mate, I know Pep Guardiola. You knew Pep Guardiola knew as well, don't you? Huddersfield, it was. Yeah, you know, you know what it is. Yeah, Pep Guardiola knew this. He knew. He one hundred percent knew because he said it before the international break. He said it before the international break. He said, "Let's see you come back from the uh, for, <laughs> from, from 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 the uh, from the international break." Right, I've got a stream with Judge Mo, man. I'm being shouted at by Hussam in the chat, so I'm going to go do a stream on Judge Mo's channel. Get yourself over there. We're going to cook Mo about something. I'm not sure what, but he always gets uh, cooked. And uh, yeah, leave your comments down below, man. Left back wise, who would you go for? I'd go for Alfonso Davis because he's the obvious target. But I really do want Miguel Gutierrez. I think Miguel Gutierrez is like a mega player and, and we should seriously look at him. Um, other than that, I'm not sure. Branthwaite has been linked with United. Don't go there, mate. You'll ruin your career. Bruno, uh, I'm, not, not, I'm not sure. Right, I'm going to judge Mo. Get yourself over there. Stream will redirect. Catch you in a bit, people.